This was the BBC debate. I think it was their first one. And, um, you know, you, you're, you're sitting through this debate. And as, as, you, as you've said, they didn't discuss any of the um, important issues. I mean, so I took issue with that. And I also took issue just with the way the BBC frame it, because remember, the questions they ask are critical and the questions that they don't ask are also critical because what they're saying to you then, the BBC, is these things aren't important. So mm. lockdown didn't get mentioned. Mm. The damage lockdown has done both economically and to our children's health and education mm. didn't get mentioned. And, and I remember that day, a big news story came out that um, the, the damage, the hepatitis, this yep. rare disease that came out and had seriously injured... Uh, a small number of children is true, but has seriously injured them um, was the cause of lockdown because they weren't these children weren't exposed to um, you know the ordinary germs they, they would have been. That didn't get mentioned. The NHS didn't even get mentioned, and you would expect on the BBC mm -hmm. that it would get mentioned. Things like house prices, which are incredibly important, the lack of housing for the rising generation now is, is spoken about pretty much everywhere else. It seems, yes. but on a debate between Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss. So you're just left wondering, but what they did think, they did get questions in about um, Rishi Sunak's shoes and Liz Truss's earrings. Are you, are you kidding me? Because uh, I, I, yeah. I, I'd rather, like, put pencils in my eyeballs than watch a BBC-moderated mm. political debate. But they had questions on Rishi Sunak's shoes. Well, I always say I watch it, so, you know, you don't yeah. have to. Um, yeah, because it was a running story that day. Uh, uh, Truss's team, I think it was, uh, well, yeah, was saying, you know, they're pointing out Rishi Sunak was wearing a very expensive pair of shoes, so this sort of came up, oh. and then, um, whereas if Truss was wearing an inexpensive pair of earrings. I mean, all, all of this nonsense. Uh. I mean, complete nonsense. Today, you know, the, ba the Bank of England is coming out with declarations that we, we haven't heard heard for, you know, decades about how serious things are going to be in the winter. And um, all they're or, or complaining about or debating about is when a tax cut will happen. A tax cut isn't going to happen because when the, the cost of energy crisis alone hits in the winter, mm. they are going to put, have to put together some sort of emergency budget to stop people freezing in their homes. That's ultimately what's going to happen, not a yeah. tax cut. Yeah, we, we've spent all the money uh, that exists now. So yes. and we might have some more money coming in early in the uh, 22nd century if things go well. But, uh, but th what is frustrating it, is that there's been no connection made between the situation we're in now and the decisions that the government made with the BBC and the whole groupthink media cheering them yes. on uh, for the last two and a half years. Yes, absolutely. As they, you know, destroyed, destroyed our economy, mm. stopped people from trading, from from running their business, um, uh, you know, uh, if you if you dared question that, because I remember I was one of the few that did, you were you were vilified. I mean, mm. you were a granny killer. If you said, actually, we need to be proportionate, at least we mm. need to have a balance. Mm. I think that going forward, this could have really serious consequences down the line. It was essentially ju just please shut up, you know, just yeah. just don't speak to me. So I get frustrated when, again, Rishi Sunak paints himself as this incredibly I'm the responsible chance or, you know, she's going to cut all these taxes. I won't because I'm responsible. It's like, I would believe you. You would have some credibility, but for the fact that you ran that mad, for instance, just to take one mad scheme, mm -hmm. the mad uh, eat out to help out scheme, yeah, where yeah. you literally paid people yeah. to eat in McDonald's, even though we know we have an obesity crisis, yeah. which we also know was a, a serious uh, aggravating factor if you did get COVID. Yeah. I mean, none of it made any sense, no. right? No. I mean, none of it. We want to save lives. Therefore, we're going to encourage people to eat unhealthy food, which we know can 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 cause serious, uh, you know, a serious reaction. Yeah. If you if but you it get doesn't COVID. matter if we make uh, if we make the obesity crisis worse, because nobody can see a doctor except by Zoom call. And on the Zoom call, all they can see is your head and shoulders. So they've no idea uh, that you're uh, 30 stone below yeah. the camera thing. I mean, none of not the last two years. Oh, let's all clap for carers. Oh, we're clapping for all the doctors and nurses. Where are they? The, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the average uh, 
NHS doctor works a three-day week now. Well, I mean, it seems now the government are going to have to go head-to-head -head with the doctors, right? Mm. They're not clapping them anymore because the doctors are threatening mm. to strike over, mm. over pension deals. So, yeah, none of it make, it's all, everything is in isolation, so the media get their favourite little subject for that mm. day, and they're never held responsible for whatever incredibly destructive decisions that they had made, made in the lockdown. I think we should get an apology for that and an actual acknowledgement about how much damage it has caused. Real damage, not just, you know, numbers on a screen, actual damage to people's lives mm. going forward. And then, and then we can realise that actually we've got a media that hold people to account as opposed to an hysterical media that just whip up fear all the time. They whipped yeah. up fear over COVID and they will continue to whip up fear now about the economy. And, and that may well be you know, true that Armageddon is coming, but um, it's because of the damage that had previously been caused by your hysterical overreaction to COVID. Liz, Liz Truss has done quite a good job of triangulating herself away from the last two years. She says uh, there's not going to be any more lockdowns under her, and she wasn't keen on them at the time, but she was just an unimportant uh, person, had no say of it. She was just her Britannic Majesty's Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, and that's apparently just a very junior government position, so she had no say in anything mm. important. Uh, Rishi was at the heart of it. Do you think that Liz Truss argument works? Well, I mean, I don't think it, it, it works really for anybody, in, in which case, well, why do, we have, why do we have cabinet ministers at all? But on the other hand, I do remember how hysterical the media were. Mm. I do know that there was, you know, huge public support for the lockdown, despite other people trying to say this, this is a really bad idea. Mm. Um, so you, you do have to factor that into account. And also, you know, we didn't have a government. We had the experts. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we had the sage experts. They were the ones in charge. Where are they now? They're not going to be paying for your energy bill. Yeah, no. You know, it, get them out with their charts. Where are you, yeah, Chris Wishy? Yeah. Give me your energy chart because yeah. people are going to die this winter, but they, Some of these people, you can't find them now.